I thought up of the title of my talk, probably not in quite the mood I should have done, and I said, uh, uh, open space, so what? I really just want to get us all to start thinking about what really are we expecting from our open spaces. So some thoughts on how design can make the best use of our limited open space, what I want to talk about. The first thing that popped into my head was uh, this photograph, which I show to my uh, landscape architecture students. Um, uh, and it's a shot of a piece of countable open space. It's, it's in Victoria Park. And so I just say, well, what's wrong with that? I'm not going to do that now. There's no time. I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Uh, in the blazing sun, we have all these nice expensive seats and paving and even uh, some nice nanny state posters telling you what you can't do. And, um, but you'll notice that there's nobody there, right? No people. Where are the people? Yes, they're all huddled, you know, in fact, rather like pigeons. You know, they're all huddled underneath this, uh, this fantastic banyan tree because the banyan tree is providing all this wonderful shade. So that really shows you that the design, the, the, the design is dysfunctional. The design is not related to the function and the use of the space. In, in complete contrast, here is uh, a tree in Moy War, near the waterfront, which actually about 25 years ago grew as a little natural seedling and a crack uh, in the paving and was um, well, it's a long story, but it was saved and it was uh, uh, permitted to grow. It has grown, and it's now quite a respectable tree. But if you look at this space, look, look at what this tree is doing. Completely free of charge. It's not an open space. But the services that it's providing are amazing. Like it's a play area. It's a sitting area. It's even sort of a, a rest. Whoops, sorry, wrong bit. Uh, it's a, where's the red one? It's a restaurant extension, it's a bicycle park, and that's apart from the fact that it's uh, providing uh, ecological services and shade and all the rest of it. So this is a multi-purpose, um, accidental open space, really, in Moy War. So these are the two contrasts. So while, uh, while I go through, through these, maybe you can think about, you know, what is it? What is it that makes a quality open space? What makes it worth having? <clears throat> So what about Hong Kong? I mean, we all think of Hong Kong. And the first thing you think is, ooh, it's all these awful open spaces. You know, it's all concrete and all the rest of it. And, uh, and there's, a certain, there's definitely a truth to that. Um, this is, these are photographs of Lake Yuen Estate in 1976. And really, this sort of conjures up the whole completely useless state of open space right? that there's been traditionally in Hong Kong. And just in case you thought that this was a uh, uh, or uh, an old-fashioned habit that we've got out of. Uh, no, brand new open spaces are being uh, constructed in exactly the same way right now. And this is just near um, the piers seven and eight, the new Star Ferry Pier. Uh, a great sea of endless concrete. Right. Uh, looking to the other side, towards Pier Seven, you can see here. Oh, crikey, this thing. Sorry, I can't. Remember. Um, you can see that there's a big planting area between the two ferry piers. Uh, what, what use is that? I mean, it's great. I mean, it's, it's green. It's not, uh, it's not just concrete. But it's, um, it's unusable. You can't use it. There's some people perched on the edge of this uh, wall here. right? But the wall, actually, you can't see from this angle, is, is at a 45 degree angle, the top of the wall. So you can't, it's very uncomfortable to sit on it. So even the planting and so-called open space areas are sometimes designed, or it seems, seems, to be, seems to be designed specifically to put people off. You know. <clears throat> if you go up on top of Pier 7, there is actually an open space. You'd be amazed to know. Um, you wouldn't know unless you read this sign here. Right? This sign tells you that there's an open space somewhere. Um, oh, there it is. Public space. Right. <laughs> um, so I, you can imagine not that many tourists find this public space. And when you get there, there isn't an awful lot to it anyway. It's a kind of a concrete um, uh, corridor, nowhere to sit, nothing to do. You can stand there and feel embarrassed you know, while these people eating their expensive dinners can watch you. you know, it's a, so it's a totally useless um, <coughs> uh, thing. A little bit further along, along the waterfront, that the new waterfront walkway, you know, which eventually will link up to the, uh, the, the uh, convention center over there, 
We've waited 150 years, right, for, to get uh, Central and Wan Chai connected, the waterfront. Um, and what happens, the People's Liberation Army have required that this piece of the waterfront be fenced off for their use. Now, um, I'm not a, a military strategist, okay, but my understanding is that they're supposed to be able to invade Taiwan, and Central should not really be a problem, right? So uh, I don't quite understand why this has to be like this, and you can see that it's, all the grass is growing here. Uh, they're not using it, right? So can we have it back, please? Thank you. Uh, yawn, you know, here's another concrete box that you can go and sit in somewhere <coughs> um, uh, in, in uh, Western District. And here's another one in Moy War. It's actually just been revamped, this one. It's like a furnace. You know, you can't, you can't sit there. I mean, and it's very, very rarely used. So it's not connected to any of the buildings or restaurants or anything around. Uh, it's just a pretty much a waste of space. And uh, in case you were thinking of doing something in that space, forget it. Right? Here are all the things that you're not allowed to do. Right? Um, this actually is just the short list. Right? This is the shortened version of that. Right? And that if you ever want to have a bit of entertainment, you want to read something entertaining, get hold of these pleasure ground regulations. They're absolutely hilarious. Right? No swearing, uh, no exposing sores or bodily ailments, you know, no bringing horses or equines. Yeah. All, I mean, some of them are quite sensible, but uh, some of them are a bit excessive. Uh, while in Australia, they can do this, right? Please walk on the grass, smell the roses, hug the trees, talk to the birds, you know, enjoy. Right? So why can't we do that? Why are our playgrounds like this? You know, why we create these concrete boxes, these little furnaces, this is, this is metal. It gets so hot in July, you, you burn yourself to touch it. Right? Um, where, whereas in London, in the Queen Elizabeth uh, Olympic Park, you have sand and water and, <coughs> and uh, mounding. Uh, we have uh, you know, proper um, uh, climbing frames, uh, some water. Why aren't our spaces like this? Why is this in the middle of Pokong Park? Yeah. I mean, it looks like an industrial area. This is actually in the middle of Pokong Park. And in case you thought this was a road, it's a cycle track. Right? This is so cyclists and pedestrians don't bump into one another. <clears throat> uh, while in London, uh, in the Queen Elizabeth um, Olympic Park, a similar sort of thing looks like this. And this must be one of the all-time classics. Right? Uh, <laughs> It's actually gone now. I'm sorry to say it should have been preserved as sort of warning to humanity, you know. But um, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, this, this is a sort of a human cage, you know, where you can go and sit, um, sit out. You know, uh, sitting out. I never say to my wife, darling, I'm just going to pop pop out and sit out for a while. I mean, where did this sitting out come from? But anyway. Um, so when you're faced with all this, there's really only one thing you can do, and that is phone up your friend and former colleague, Barnaby Smith, and go for a walk and see whether it's really as bad as it looks. And it's not all that bad. Right. Here we go. Uh, this is the um, Tamar Park. And uh, very, very simple. Uh, as Kareen just mentioned, it's just paths, trees, and young trees at that, grass, and people do their own thing. They make their own space. So the thing that comes out of this is that you really don't actually need to give very much in the way of equipment. Let people sort it out for themselves. Right? People are actually very good at this. Um, it was surprising and rather relaxing and uplifting to see these people having fun like this. A little bit further along the waterfront, um, in contrast to that area between piers 7 and 8 I showed you earlier, look at this. You know, fantastic. All it is, concrete seat, banyan trees, few shrubs, steps, off you go. Right? Everybody can just come in and enjoy themselves and make, a, make, make of it what they will. Uh, and there's a few, there's a little bar here and whatnot. You know, you can uh, sit and people watch. This is a great place to people watch, especially at the weekend. And that's a key thing. It's people, right? We walked along a little bit further to... Uh, the, sorry, the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Park um, in Western. Again, great. You know, this huge, great big space. 
and people really enjoying themselves. You can see they bring their tents. They bring their, it's, they're amazingly well prepared, actually. And uh, they bring all of their play equipment with them. And again, the atmosphere is really quite relaxing and enjoyable. And a lot of, you can spend a long time there just watching, just watching other people. The playground, although it's a very prescriptive playground, right, it, the weekends is packed out and people are enjoying themselves. And some of the play features actually wobble and move, you know, so it's not completely static like that other one I showed you. However, it's not connected to the next bit of the waterfront. In order to go further along to Kennedy Town, you have to walk back in to town. And uh, this is a shot of, um, on Connaught Road uh, uh, West. And this is some of the planting that we uh, put in under the Greening Master Plan, probably about eight years ago now. That, um, but what I want to mention is that here is a clue. Yeah, here's a clue. There's a sofa, right? Now, this is telling you something, right? This sofa tells you that there's a demand, right? There's a public amenity demand that is not being fulfilled by the, um, uh, and here's another one, right? That's not being fulfilled. All of these are, you know, uh, amazing clues, you know, that something is not being provided that maybe it should be, or maybe we should just let people do this, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I, either way, it's interesting that people are creating their own little mini spaces by themselves. And then we walked out onto the um, Western District uh, uh, Public Cargo uh, Pier. Um, what an amazing experience to walk out onto this pier. Of course, you're not allowed to go, right? But there's a big sign saying, if you come in through this door, you do it at your own risk. OK, all right, I'll go there at my own risk. And I'm not the only one. There's hordes of people wandering around on this pier. It's fantastic. You really should go down and have a look. Um, because there's a wonderful feeling of freedom you know, being out here. There's something uh, intangible about this. It, it, that, that it's not controlled. There are no rules. Nobody's telling you what to do. So you can just enjoy yourself uh, however you like. Um, uh, you can see, look at, look at this, there's even romance right, going on. So what's, th this is what this, uh, pu the public space is supposed to be giving us. I know it's very difficult to quantify you know, uh, uh, things like romance, but um, we need them in our city. Otherwise, it's not a cool city. <clears throat> Uh, here are a few shots of um, Inspiration Lake, which actually is now is sometimes living up to its name. You know, it's just quite inspiring. People, again, bring their little tents and their picnics and whatnot uh, out here. Um, here. Here in Sai Kung, this is interesting because you know, the, the, this open space, there's no boundary. There's no fence between the open space and the shops and the building functions around it. So. Um, there's a tight relationship between the open space and all of the other activities. You know, mum and dad can sit here and have a bottle of wine, and uh, you know, the kids can go over here and play and still be watched and still within safe radius. And this is what makes a living open space. <clears throat> what does make a quality open space? Uh, I went to this project for public spaces site, uh, which is inspired by William White. Uh, just if you don't know any any uh, publications by William White, just go to the library and get them and read them. Whatever he's written, it's brilliant. Um, they've got these classifications: sociability, uses and activities, comfort and image, access and linkages. And I took my rather wonky list that I made uh, after going for that walk and tried to fit it into that, see if it would fit in. So yeah, people, people are the key thing for a public, an urban public open space. People go to watch other people and see what they're doing. And this is what makes it, this is the difference between successful and not successful, right? Uh, so the uses and activities, you know, that you, some are provided, some people bring their own uh, comfort and image. You do need security, safety, visibility, shade, and shelter, visibility in particular. If you can see everybody, right, at eye level, then, of course, the space is going to be self, much more self-pleasing and feel much better. Uh, the edges, I just mentioned that now. Uh, and wow. You know, some spaces, you want a wow. Is there a wow factor? Now, how you quantify this, uh, Karina? I'll pass that on to you later. Um, uh, or, or there's a wow factor 
which is excitement or joy. If you go there and you feel joyful, there's also an ah factor, right? Which is rather like walking out onto that pier where you feel relaxed, you're a relief. You've left behind all this, you know, not very far behind you, but you've left it behind for a little while. Uh, I just want to quickly, I'm sure I'm going to be running out of time soon, but quickly just say a little bit about public, public space. So public space as opposed to countable, formal, open space. Public space, an area where everyone, regardless of his or her background, can enter without prerequisite, uh, interact with each other, social exchanges, entertainment, community organizing, commercial activities. But public space without public life is dead. Okay. Um, what are our public spaces? Um, the uh, hillsides, the uh, beaches, squares, public parks, open spaces, cemeteries, maybe um, uh, streets and steps, waterfront. Um, this is, of course, not including housing estates and all the other categories that uh, that Karine mentioned before. But you can see that um, open spaces are a component of our public space, our public realm. <clears throat> so we shouldn't be depending on them for everything. What about? I'd like to mention a couple in particular. One is streets. Um, before the introduction of the motor car in the 1920s and 30s. Uh, the streets were also open spaces. Well, they were many, many things, right? They were commercial spaces as well. They were everything. People lived their lives on the street, right? <clears throat> by the 60s, you know, certainly by the 60s, cars had basically taken over these spaces mostly. And the streets were given over to motor vehicles no longer able to serve this social function that they used to. Uh, to the point where, you know, this is the kind of this is the situation really in in many of the streets in Hong Kong. What I find what I find interesting about this uh, sign, this police sign, which is in Fe uh, Fe Fleming Road in Wan Chai, is that there's nobody in the car, right? You know, <laughs> this sort of tells you something about the responsibility or the attitude to responsibility here. Um, it's the poor old pedestrian, right? The hapless pedestrian has to take the brunt of it. Um, but there is actually quite a bit of space. You know, there's Queen's Road Central, uh, Devoe Road, Connaught Road Central. So public space and open space. We do have a few examples of where these work together. This is uh, Chater Road in the week and at the weekend. It becomes a public open space. Again, no facilities. It's actually a road, the infrastructure. But it functions as a public open space at the weekend. Um, here's one of the few streets that's permanently, permanently pedestrianized in Hong Kong, uh, Great George Street in Causeway Bay. Luard Road in the 1960s, the two, uh, uh, if you're a driver, outside lanes used to be Dai Pai Dongs. This is the same area looking in the other direction. Uh, the Dai Pai Dongs are got rid of, you know, in the, although they were an amazing open space. I mean, they were fantastic. The street really functions as an open space. Um, the, these little extensions, these little footpath extensions were built, these little bell outs, and trees planted in each one. And look at the impact of those 25 years later. Amazing. Right? Um, so there have been efforts to get some greenery back into the streets and to give the streets a better quality. These are some examples of tree planting under the greening master plans, which was an effort by the government and a very worthwhile effort by the government to try and improve the conditions of the street. And not recognizing the street as a public open space, but at least trying to make the streets a bit better than they are. Uh, however, under this project, we couldn't change the infrastructure. So we, all we could do was squeeze trees into holes in the existing infrastructure. So what we really need is, um, is not a greening master plan, but a human being master plan. <clears throat> Here's a shot of. Um, uh, Pedder Street, just down the road here, uh, in 1989. I did this sketch for the uh, cover of, um, for, for uh, uh, TV Times, no, no, sorry, the, the Sunday Post magazine in 1989, um, with a vision of what Pedder Street could be like. It shouldn't be just a street uh, or just an emergency vehicle access. It could be 
an open space or function as an open space. I still want it to be like that, but uh, of course, if you go there now, you'll see that absolutely nothing has happened in the last 30 years at all. <clears throat> um, if you want to move a large number of people safely in an orderly fashion, you get rid of the vehicles. You turn Nathan Road into an open space to get the people to the new Chinese New Year fireworks and then get them back again, right? Um, safely and quickly. Then you get the cars out of it in order to do that. There's no space, of course, everywhere. There's no space in Hong Kong. Uh, my answer is really, really. Are you sure you know, there's actually really no space in Hong Kong? There is, of course, space, right? You can fit a lot of people into that space as well. And uh, whatever, you know, I don't want to, I'm, this, I'm not bringing this up for any, to, to make a huge political point. My point here is that, is that this street, right, this roadway, which after two weeks looked like that, you know, for a short time functioned as a city square, which Hong Kong is really missing. And missing, but there is obviously, like those little seats sitting in the road, there's actually a huge demand for space. So in fact, space, even the name of this movement, Occupy, is a very, obviously, political issues. Anyway, now we've got that. Fantastic. If we just took one lane from each, uh, from the side of the road, which was, in this case, done legally, right, about six months ago in Devo Road on Sunday, um, the whole street has changed completely. Then you have an open space system throughout the whole city, not just little silos of open space, you know, cut off from one another. <clears throat> just one lane, if you just take one lane off the side of each side of uh, Queen's Road East, it can look like this. You can get, still get emergency vehicle access, essential vehicle access in there, uh, shuttle buses, what have you, but there's room for seats, there's room for people, there's room for trees. Um, same with Connaught Road. Uh, we can transform the city. You know, the city could become almost like a giant open space if we did this. That's why I'm going, I'm going on about the streets, <coughs> uh, because they're the only way to connect up the open spaces that we have. Uh, another area that's important is the urban fringe. This is uh, the Ap Chai Wan headland, which is a so-called borrow area. Actually, it's a, a theft area where material was stolen in order to fill in Zhang Kwano, in order to build Zhang Kwano Newtown. But um, uh, we, we reinstated this, this hillside uh, with um, uh, planting very, very simple, simple paths, incredibly simple. Look at people come in and they do their own thing, right? They're growing little patches of bok choy and choy sum up here. This, this is another way of looking at open space. It doesn't all have to be manicured, you know, and and uh, uh, all perfect. Can we have a, a, a little bit of a more wild approach? Finally, finally, I'm almost there. Um, uh, some takeaways, some so what takeaways. Uh, people are the key ingredient. Uh, definition, uh, as Karine uh, uh, intimated before, uh, countable open space streets and rural fringe are all part of our public space. We want, need to think about how this works. How do we define public, uh, public space and open space? User-led rather than maintenance-led, which it tends to be at the moment. A permissive rather than prescriptive approach, i.e. don't just tell people what they can do in different areas or tell them what they can't do uh, within reason. Let them decide what they're going to do with it. Um, and then design around that, right? Instead of designing something and then just giving it over. Uh, more wilderness. Why can't some of our urban spaces be more wild uh, with adventure playgrounds and water and sand and what have you? Um, uh, integrate these spaces with the surroundings and the streets do this by their very nature. But um, if you can, get the edges of the open spaces need to be considered as well. Uh, responsibility. So, LCSD, which at the moment is primarily, or seems to be primarily seen as a maintenance department and a, a kind of no you can't department, um, is a great shame. It should really be you know, made into a, a, a super design, engagement, maintenance, uh, and ad, an adaptive department, which really rather like, this is one of the reasons why Singapore is ahead, apart from all the 
uh, three main reasons, of course, Lee Kuan Yew. But the other reason is that they have um, a parks department which has got muscle, right? And the parks department is in charge of the design and the maintenance. So you don't have one department designing, handing over to another maintenance department. You know, the, the parks department can, is more flexible and can deal with issues that come up because once you've designed something, of course the situation will change in the future. Um, uh, so things right now. Um, could we just please sort out this street seat issue? You know, because uh, seats are not maintained by LCSD because they're not planting, and they're not maintained by highways because they're not necessary for highways function. Just please carry, sort it out. Um, open idle areas, the area, the areas in the city which are, you know, just lying empty for a long time. If it's properly communicated, surely some of these spaces can just be opened up in the same way that the pier, the, the, the Western Harbor, uh, the Western Cargo Pier is. Uh, and as Kareen said, prioritize the areas that you've already zoned as O. You know, we can have another tunnel and all the open spaces, right, for much less money. So open space, so what? So prioritize it, get on with it. <laughs>